Hello, I'm Gary Howell. I'm the founder of Morgan Walsh Consultancy. We're an IT company and we provide services to local government and commercial companies. We're going to look at the uh, Aginus LoRaWAN field test device. This device is used to do a survey of an area where you're planning to deploy sensors and you need to ensure that there is suitable LoRaWAN coverage. It also has built-in GPS so that the location of your tests are recorded for later review. The field test device is a handheld one, battery powered and charged via a standard USB connector. It has four simple screens. The first one shows the uplink and downlink uh, signal strength using a bar system similar to your phone. The second screen shows similar but more detailed information in numerical form. The third screen shows your current GPS position and the number of satellites and the number of satellites which should indicate the quality of the position information. And finally the fourth screen shows some statistics. To operate the device press the large button in the middle. This sends a message out to the LoRaWAN network and will receive hopefully a response from the gateway. And here you can see we have four bars on both up and down, which is good. So this is probably a good place for a sensor. The second screen again shows similar information uh, in numerical form. To add the device to the uh, Things Network version 3, we require the uh, dev UI, the app UI and an app key. The dev UI can be retrieved from the back of the device. There's a small label towards the bottom. It's quite small. I tend to use my phone then to magnify it and take a photograph. But either way, you should record the number safely for use in a second. The first method of retrieving the other two is via an Android app. So you require an Android phone, the device, an OTG cable from the Android plug to a USB-A socket, a standard charging cable from USB to uh, USB micro. So take your Android phone, the OTG cable, your connector may be different to mine, mine's a USB-C, yours might be a USB micro. Connect the power lead. And then finally, the USB micro into the field test device, ensuring the correct orientation. On the Android phone, start the app and turn on the device. After a few seconds, press the connect button on the app. I'll accept the request to allow COM port access. The field test device now shows command mode on the screen and this is reflected in the app. Now select network configuration and open up the uh, OTAA tab over the air activation and individually copy the app UI and the app key somewhere safe, which we'll use shortly in the Things Network. If you find copying these numbers fiddly, as I do in this application, uh, you can close all the tabs, select OTTA again, and transmission. And the numbers now appear much larger towards the bottom of the screen, which you can either copy down or copy and paste from there. And finally, disconnect your cables. If we're using Windows, uh, install the Windows app. It require the same cable and the test device, of course. Connect up the cables and start the Windows app. Once the app is loaded, click the Connect button. Confirm the device confirms command mode, and this again is reflected in the app, which says it's connected. Now click Network Configuration, OTAA, 
and here you can more easily copy the uh, app UI and the app key again to be kept safely for use in a moment and finally remove your cables now we're in the things network version 3 uh, console and here on the application screen we've created our uh, app application and now we're going to select end devices and add end device select manually over the activation and we're going to select LoRaWAN version 102 and click start on the registration screen type in your device ID and copy and paste your app UI and dev UI numbers and finally type in your end device username and click network layer settings here we're going to select Europe Rev B and nothing selected for class B and C on the join screen copy and paste your app key and click add end device and finally go to live data and we can see the device has been created now back to the test device turning it on and if you watch the things network console you'll see the join request appear and be accepted and in the moment we'll see the first set of data coming up from the test device and there it is so the uh, device is now connected to Things Network version 3, it is able to send its data, including GPS position, to its application, uh, which can then be used on your end user application, for instance, Tego IO. We hope you found this useful. Uh, if there's anything we can help you with, please do get in touch. And thank you very much for watching.